Topic of our lesson today, things we're going to discuss, the thing we're going to discuss today is basic, very, very, very basic. But as basic as it is, it is very important and, thing, and something that most people tend to ignore. And we are going to talk about, well, I guess, again, basic, market direction. So you're supposed to be seeing uh, a chart of the S&P 500 intraday right now, five minute candles. Do you guys see that? Just let me know if you do. Yeah, you do. Okay. So the last uh, three days of the S&P 500, uh, just um, a small reminder for those of you who haven't been trading with us yesterday. Uh, that's what happened yesterday. Market came down. S&P was a little bit more than 3% down. Nasdaq more than 4%. So that was yesterday's trend. And today was a little bit different. So I want to talk to you a little bit about, um, well, first of all, the trend. Let's talk about the trend. As you can see, I'm watching the S&P 500. Uh, in five minute candles. Usually, actually, I'm, us I'm watching it. Uh, let me show you how I'm usually watching it. I'm watching it more like this. So I'm, I'm trying to watch uh, four days of the S&P 500. So you're seeing now on my channel the way I watch the S&P 500. These are five minute candles and it's clear enough. Why? Because it's a big, big chart. I use a whole screen, almost a whole screen. Uh, to show this S&P 500 chart and just below that uh, I would uh, I would see uh, you could see my my Nasdaq 100 so you don't see it right now but uh, the QQQ is just below this uh, this chart so if I'm watching um, if you would have been here with me at my home you would be seeing something like that that would be my Nasdaq 100 just below my S&P 500 chart now, it's very important for me to uh, explain uh, why I do that. Uh, first, you know, uh, if you've been through the Star Trader course, you know that the S&P 500, as we teach in the Star Trader course, which we will start on this Sunday, uh, where I'll get into this matter specifically, is a very, very important chart. The S&P 500, or right now the, AT, the ETF of the S&P 500, is something which is, in my opinion, uh, the most important tool of day trading. So just a small reminder, because that's not the topic of our lesson. Um, topic of our lesson is watching the trend of the S&P 500 or determining the trend of the S&P 500. But just a small reminder, the S&P 500 is the most important tool for the institutional traders. What I do and what I trade is the institution's way of trading. So I know, or I expect I know most of the time, I try to figure out what is the direction of the institutional traders. That's why I'm only trading stocks which are only uh, above $10, because 90% of institutional traders cannot or may not, are not allowed to trade stocks under $10. 95% of them are not allowed to trade stocks under $5. And the S&P 500, of course, usually don't have stocks which are under $10. Uh, under $10 are, are, are considered to be very um, low volume, uh, small caps. It's not always true. Like uh, you will find some stocks which are, uh, which are under $10, which are uh, considered to be uh, big companies like uh, Ford. Okay, let me show you. Ford Motors, you can consider this one a small cap, right? Uh, but the stock is under $10, uh, $8.90 or so right now. So as you can see, Ford right now on the chart is under $10. That's a stock I may decide to trade. I don't like trading stock Ford because it's, 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 the volatility is very low. As you can see here, the numbers are like um, 10 cents increments here. So there's nothing to trade in this company. But some stocks under $10 are very uh, interesting to trade. But I will not, usually, I will not trade them because stocks under $10 are considered to be, uh, most of them are small caps. Again, not some of them, like most of them, like Ford is not considered to be small cap, of course, uh, but most of them are small caps. Uh, companies don't like their shares, their shares to be under $10. 
uh, they will usually try to increase the price you can do that easily you can do it easily you can you can um, um, you can change the uh, um, um, I'm trying to remember the name but after half a bottle of wine <laughs> oh come on help me out what is it called uh, when you have like um, thousand stocks divide no okay split right too much wine so you can do a split you can do a reverse split in that case so usually you would find companies like if they have their stock at $400 they will do a split for example uh, if you own a stock um, which was $400 they will give you four stocks therefore go to $100 why they would do that so that people will start trading their stocks because expensive stocks are not uh, people are, are not are not trading expensive stocks as much as they're trading um, uh, cheap stocks I mean chips would be considered up to one normal excuse me will be considered up to $100 over $100 that would usually get split not always depending on a lot of things but companies would usually split uh, some companies will reverse split thank you very much Russ. some companies will reverse split their stocks meaning if if you have a stock that's worth um, five bucks for example uh, you want it over ten dollars you want it over ten dollars because if it's not over ten dollars it will not be traded by institutional traders and they are 80 percent of the market so what do you do you do a reverse split so for every four stocks that you own you're only going to get one that's not like a split where you have one stock and then you get four stocks for every stock four stocks you get one for example if that's a four to one reverse split it could, it could be different of course so you get one stock for every stock four stocks that you had so all of a sudden the stock that was worth five dollars is now worth twenty dollars right so it's over ten dollars a normal a so-called normal price of a stock now that's the advantage what is the disadvantage that's the question i'm asking you what is the disadvantage of doing so what would be the problem why wouldn't everybody i mean okay so ford is at eight dollars they don't like it to be at eight dollars it's not regarded to be a, um, a normal price for a stock now of course ford don't have that problem why don't they have the problem because it's a big liquidity stock it's been traded for today for 50 million shares yes volume is the answer that is correct that is correct so the problem is just I'm and again I'm not talking about Ford Motors I'm talking about a normal under ten dollar well, not a normal a stock that is traded under ten dollars usually a small cap a small cap uh, they can't just do that they can't reverse split it four to one because then the volume will come down four to one so if they had 1 million shares in volume this the volume now comes to 250,000 shares now maybe it's going to increase some but it's 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 going to be uh, normal it's going to be uh, 4 to 1 in the volume too so the problem is institutional traders will only trade stocks which volume is over 1 million shares normally again so if you want institutional traders to be interested in your company you just need to be over $10 and with decent volume if you have decent volume maybe you can reverse split but it's not that every company that is under ten dollars can reverse split and get a decent volume so that institutions will be interested now of course Ford Motors can do that easily 50 million shares today they can easily reverse split why don't they do that I don't know I'm not getting into details here I don't know what what made them decide not to do that but anyway this is something that can be done so what I'm saying here is that uh, and again well I, st I started talking about uh, I started talking about uh, market and the market trends and why it's important to see institutional traders trading your stocks and I mentioned that institutional traders are only trading stocks which are over ten dollars but these stocks must have uh, excuse me one second I do have a small problem here with the charting uh, let me do something here okay okay 
screen a little bit. Yeah, excuse me. I just need to fix something here. So again, um, I want to watch institutional traders. I want to watch uh, the uh, trend. I want to make my decision according to what they do. And the main and most important tool is the S&P 500. And again, I'm going to talk to you today about the S&P 500 and the S&P and specifically about the S&P 500 trend and how to determine the S&P 500 trend and, and, and what do we need to understand from that. So as you can see, the S&P 500, um, again, let's watch yesterday. Yesterday was a big down day, more than 3% in the S&P 500. That was the S&P 500 yesterday. In, a, in days like this, it's very, very, well, you have a very clear trend yesterday. So it's relatively easy to determine the trend yesterday. So really, it's not a good example. It's not a good example because it's easy. It's relatively easy. Now, of course, I didn't trade, I didn't trade yesterday after 11.30. So uh, when I left you yesterday, market was around here. And then we went kind of sideways. Uh, you know, we usually go sideways anyway, be anywhere between 11.30 and 1.30. And that is because it's lunchtime New York. When it's lunchtime New York, um, institutional traders just go down for a sandwich. And that's what happens. That What usually happens on lunchtime is that the market just goes sideways. So as you can see, yesterday market went sideways. They came back from their sandwich and market continued to move lower. Now, take a look at today. It's kind of the same thing. Look at uh, 11.30. It's approximately here. We're kind of going side with a little bit more volatility than yesterday. And then they come back from the lunchtime and the market drops and then moves up. Uh, we're still not uh, done for the day. But um, the thing is, we need to understand market direction in order to trade correctly and that is because 80 percent of the volume in the stocks that we are trading and again i'm talking only about stocks that are only over ten dollars stocks over ten dollars are stocks that institutional traders trade because they are considered to be bigger than small caps and because they have uh, the right volume uh, institutional traders trade in millions of shares. They need volume. They need real companies, real volume. So everything that has to do with stocks that are over $10 will be traded by institutional traders and they will trend, trade according to the market trend. Now, again, I'm going here to lesson one in the Star Trader course, which I'm going to do in just a few days on Sunday. We start this lesson and I will explain this lesson. I'm not getting into details right now, but I will explain in this lesson that institutional traders are only allowed to buy when there's a green candle. So when you see a green candle like here, and that's the place where institutional traders are allowed. Sorry, I don't see my... Uh, now you're supposed to be seeing my... My mouse. So when you see a green candle like here, that's the place where institutional traders are allowed to buy. Then some red candles they are selling, and green candles they are buying, and so on. So when we are trading a stock, it is very very important for us to determine what is the trend of the market, what the market is doing, and that will help us understand the behavior of the institutional traders. And since they are eighty percent of the volume that we are trading that will help us trade the stocks that we need to trade. Now, again, I'm talking about stocks over $10 and less than 3% uh, uh, movement. For example, uh, if a stock is under 3%, is, is coming under, um, like dropping, uh, falling more than 3%, this may change this rule or over 3%, higher than 3%, this may change. So I'm talking about stocks that haven't moved more than 3%, which is the vast majority of the stocks that we will trade. And again, the price is over $10, usually under $100. So watching market direction, let's talk a little bit about uh, market direction here. First, the most important tool, the most important tool I use is the view up. You see the red line over here, that's the view up. 
the view up is a very very important tool and again no, it is not a lesson about what is the view up but just basically speaking the view up is a very important tool one of the most important tool and again i'm coming back here to institutional traders institutional traders are being paid according to the view up if they will if they are buying today if they will buy below the view up they're getting paid the more and again i'm not getting into details there's a there's a, there's, a, there's a lesson I made specifically about the view up. You are invited to uh, search Google or search my my web, my my website. Uh, sorry, our YouTube channel and find this lesson where I will talk a little bit more about the view up, so you understand exactly the uh, the behavior of the view up. But I'm not going to talk about it right now. Just basic idea: institutional traders are buying when the price of the share is lower than the view up. They are selling above the view up, buying below. That's why you would expect a stock that came down under the view up to move back to the view up. If it moves over the view up, you expect it to come back down to the view up. If it drops down, you expect it to return to the view up. So as you can see, the stock is moving all of the day around the view up. Higher, lower, higher, lower. That's a place where institutional traders will make money if they buy. And here's uh, Clifton just gave you the link to this lesson. Uh, if they are buying below the view up, they will make more in commissions. They don't care about where the market's going to end today or where the stock that they are buying will end at the end of the day. They just don't care. The only thing they care is at that point, at the point that they bought the stock, Right there, at the point that they bought the stock, they care that they're going to make more extra income. For example, if I'm going to show you here, if I'm going to show you here today's uh, behavior of Visa, whatever, you can see that Visa behaved very much like the market did today. So you see, market moved down, then moved up, came back to the view up. Here's Visa coming up, coming down. Here's a drop here. Visa comes back. Market comes up, Visa moves over the view up, then comes down. So they're not buying the S&P 500. You see, then Visa drops down and it will come back to the view up. And just like the market did come back. Now, the market is not done yet. We'll continue with a few minutes, like 25 minutes until the end of the trading day. But and and this move right now, you're probably going to see it shortly in Visa too. So what you're seeing here is that if... And institutional traders will buy Visa somewhere around here. He will make an extra income because he bought it below the view up. It's a very, very important tool. Uh, and again, I'm, and I'm not talking today about the view up. The lesson of today is about the S&P 500 direction or the trend of the S&P 500. So it is important to understand the trend and to understand the behavior of the S&P 500 with the view up so watching the view up helps me understand where the s p 500 will move now i want you to take a look at the first few minutes of the trading day these are all five minute candles okay take a good look first the reason i'm watching four consecutive days always always watching four consecutive day uh, is because i need to understand market's direction so it's very very important to watch the last no less than four days that's what i do when i watch the s p and as i mentioned before that would be here the queues right now i change it to visa but usually it will be the queues so i'm watching the queues i'm watching the s p 500 i'm watching the last few days because i want to look for support and resistance point for example take a look at this day you see the high of this day that was the day afterwards high two approximately that was the resistance so if I'm looking for support, I would look in the last few days. Yesterday was a very special day because we came down very strong. But the close of yesterday would be also the resistance of today. So if you're watching the market comes in, comes down today, it's very likely that it will have resistance somewhere around here. Then we came down and found resistance once more at the same place. So you see around the same place. Of course, resistance is not just lines, it's an area. So I'm watching the last few days just to get an idea about market support, market resistance, market trade. Now, of course, when I start the day, I always start with the daily. 
I always start with a daily just to understand uh, where the market's coming from, what's I, what I should expect. Now here's for example is the weekly. I would usually watch it like in three years. So watch how the weekly looks like. I will get the idea of market direction. I would move to the daily. Okay, we had a big down day yesterday and today some kind of continuation. And then I would move to the intraday. And then I would get the real idea about how the market behaved yesterday, the last few days, support, resistance, market trend, and so on. So when I'm talking about market trend, which is again the topic of this lesson, although I, 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 when, I, when I mention market trend, I have always to talk about institutional traders and the stock that we are trading and everything that I just mentioned uh, prior to this. But when you watch... The market trend you need to get the whole picture the daily picture the weekly picture and everything and then i watch the intraday picture which is at least the last four days now if you have more screens than i do or bigger screens than i do i definitely encourage you to watch more days just that if i start watching more days i would have a bit of a problem seeing the last few candles with my eyesight uh, so what the market's really doing now, that's a bit of a problem to understand. But I'm okay watching daily and then moving to four days. That's what I usually do. So that's the way I would watch it. With this size of candle, I can understand uh, what the market's really doing. I'll read your questions uh, very soon, uh, Lynn, so I will answer. So um, I, I, I'm watching the market and I'm seeing the market's trend and I'm watching the view up here. Now... If I'm going to talk to you about the trend today, I want you to understand that at any point I didn't know, of course, what's coming next. So let's let's try. I'm, I'm just hiding. I'm just using this chart here to hide what happened next. So I don't want you to look at the whole day. I just want you to look at the beginning of the day. OK, so it's important to understand where the market is going and there's, again, a few tools I want you to understand to, to use here. First, daily. What happened the last few days? Weekly, too, of course. Uh, and then intraday. Intraday, last four days, support, resistance, and so on. So understand the last few days, support, and resistance. Then we move into the trading day itself. And then I want you to use two tools. The first tool is, of course, what the market is doing. That's the S&P 500. When I say market, I mean always S&P 500, the biggest 500 shares, and which is, again, topic of our lesson on Sunday, is, again, the most important tool of the institutional traders. So let's watch the first few minutes. What happened? We gapped down slightly, not a big gap down. You see, that was yesterday. That was the gap down. Initially, right out the gate, we started moving down. Then we stopped and moved up. Why does that usually happen? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking a question, but you probably know. We need to close the gap. So there's the gap. The gap was down. And we usually close the gap by moving up. Again, I don't want you to know what happened later. So the first move up is something that you need to, well, not take for granted that... Uh, there's an uptrend. Well, yes, we moved down, but then we moved over the highs. Usually, when we move over the high, I'm not talking specifically about the S&P 500 now. I'm talking about anything like stock. We moved down and then we moved over the high. That established some kind of trend. Now, of course, this trend is, is, is just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 five minute candles. That's like 50 minutes, okay? So that's 15 minutes of trading the first one hour. It's very hard to determine the trend by that time, but the first move is up. When I see the stock move, sorry, the S&P 500 moving up at the beginning of the day, well, I will say first, it is possible that this is the trend. This is the trend. However, Maybe we only did that in order to close the gap. Possibly. So I'm thinking, well, okay, so we moved up. Should I trust it? Well, no, because maybe we just moved to close the gap. Then I'm looking at the back, looking back at the last few days. And as you can see, the S&P 500 crashed down. So 
uh, very likely that the momentum will continue. Momentum is very important in trading. So now I have two reasons to understand. I have two reasons to understand that maybe the fact that the market moved over the highs is not going to establish an uptrend. Again, I'm trying to understand the trend. When I understand the trend of the S&P 500, I will understand the trend of the institutional traders who are 80% of the volume I trade, which are over $10. I'm taking you back now. So, but, but, but I always need to do that because you need to remember again, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the trend of the market, the institutional traders, what they're going to do, and I'm trying to establish what they will do in the future because I'm trying to understand whether I should short something or long something. Or if I long something, would I do it in full size or maybe half size because I don't trust the market? Or should I short something? Everything has to do with institutional traders. Everything I do in trading has to do with institutional traders and it has to do with determining the market trend. So again, market comes down. I think maybe I have something here, but that's the first few minutes. Now, the first 10 minutes are very important in trading because, um, well, I'm sorry, I, I was trying to say something else. The first 10 minutes are, are where overnight orders are settled. Overnight orders are orders that are provided to institutional traders, to banks, to brokerage firms. People provide, give orders, pre-market orders which are buy or sell orders. You never know how many you have of those. You would expect after a day like yesterday, when the market came down so strong, you would expect more sell orders. That's why the market started with a gap down because most stocks were, um, uh, stocks prices uh, were settled lower by institutional traders because there were more sell orders. That's why you have a gap down. Um, and then initial orders are down, meaning uh, the market came down in the first 15 minutes or 10 minutes, really. Last, the 15 minutes was really uh, a dodgy. So the first 10 minutes market really came down because, uh, again, you would expect people to sell in the first 10 minutes. So the market came down. Then after 10 minutes, everything is possible. Everything is possible after the first 10 minutes because, again, open orders from... Uh, since yesterday, after yesterday's close. They can be after yesterday's close, they could be the pre-market orders. These are orders that were settled in the first 10 minutes. These orders are generally being settled in the first 10 minutes. Weekend orders, that's why we call, that's why on Monday morning it's a little bit different. These are 30 minutes uh, settlement uh, because there's a lot of orders from the weekend. That's why we call it the Monday morning reversal, which is approximately at the 30 minute mark because there are more orders to sell, to settle. That's because there's a long weekend. So right now, ordinary day, first 10 minutes, orders are being settled, the market is coming down. Now, can you think, can you expect the market to continue moving down because the initial 10 minutes were down? No, because that's the first 10 minutes. If that's the first 10 minutes, you cannot determine anything in the first 10 minutes. If the market was moving up, nothing. That means nothing. Market came down, <clears throat> means nothing. So the market stopped after 10 minutes. You have a dodgy, anything can happen now. So the fact that it moved down means nothing. Then the market moves up. Does it mean anything? Yes, that the market is just trying to close the gap. Does that mean anything about market direction? No, nothing. Because the market just moved up to close the gap. Can you trust the market to continue higher? No, nothing. Because it only did that in order to close the gap. So till now, first 50 minutes or so, no idea where the market is going. No idea. Now I start watching the view up, okay? Because the view up is more important after approximately 20 minutes. View up is volume, weight, average price, but that is settling normally after 20 minutes or so. So you can't really read the view up or understand the view up importance before in the first 20 minutes. <clears throat> so it only becomes important after approximately 20 minutes. So now 
after approximately 30, 40 minutes, the view up becomes important. So the view up is just above the price. So you see the price is above. You would expect the S&P to come down to the view up. Now, you don't expect, if the market is going to continue uptrending, you expect it to bounce at the view up and continue moving higher. So again, I don't know what is about to happen. Of course, I know now, but I'm trying to hide it with this chart here. So I'm watching the market coming down to the view up and bouncing. That's the green candle you're seeing here and bouncing from the view up. So now I'm looking for direction. So the market did not continue higher over the highs. So I'm trying to figure out, well, we have a situation here. Now, that's the only time I'm trying to understand. After this period of time, that's the only time I'm starting to get some kind of a clue about market direction. That's the only time I have some kind of clue. Why? Because the market just came down under the view up. You see that red candle over here? I'm looking at it. I'm saying, well... Again, <laughs> excuse me for going back to the basics. First 10 minutes means nothing. Market moves up, closing the gap means nothing. Coming down to the view up, important, because institutional traders will sell. They're getting extra commission by selling over the view up. Important, you would expect that. Will it stop at the view up, bounce, and continue to a new high? If it would have continued to a new high, that would mean something. That would mean an uptrend. Only then, but it did not. It came down under the view up. I'm watching the S&P 500 coming under the view up. Now I'm, well, I'm questioning whether the market will continue up or down. That's the first time I'm looking at the market. I'm saying, well, it's possible that the market will continue lower. Now, the market coming down on the view up, bouncing, touching the view up, you would expect it once it reaches the view up because again institutional traders are making money by buying under the view up so you see this, this, the the s&p 500 which is again 500 biggest companies in the market is moving up that would be resistance now earlier it should have been support for a short time it has been support then it came down under the view up and then it bounced again and you would expect it to have resistance at the view up and it did. And then it coming down under this, excuse me, under this level here, that really establishes a trend. So you see, the trend starts, in my opinion, at that point, not before that. That's the point where I can start looking for a trend. That's the point where I can start understanding the trend. Came down under the view up, okay. Not the first 10 minutes, not in order to close the gap. Touched the view up, but came down, okay. That's somewhat of a downtrend for me now. Moving up to the view up, fine. Now what would it do next? Will it move over the highs? Not very likely now, because the, that's a resistance. The view up is a resistance. And look at what happens. It just moved under this support level over here and in fact under the lows that's a breakdown now so that's a continuation now even at that point i was suspecting that the market will finally come down under the lows when i saw the market coming down under this view up i mentioned that in the trading room today i said well it looks like we have a good chance to see the market under the lows when you see something like that and somebody would ask me in the trading room would you go long something no. Well, maybe if there's a perfect uptrend, uh, if the stock looks like great for an uptrend, I think some, somebody asked me at that point, would you go long Apple? Which Apple looked, I think, kind of good for a long at that time. But then I was watching this and I said, no, well, I'm not sure. But I think that was the, the, the situation. And then I said, well, no. I think there's a good chance the market will come down now. Now at that point, I'm thinking, well, we're probably going to have the downtrend. Now again, if I'm going to raise my size on shorts or avoid longs, that would make me a better trader because it's all probabilities. That's what we do as traders. We look for stocks that we, uh, we, we look for market direction. Market direction is institutional traders and institutional traders are 80% of the volume. And again, that's something I'm going to discuss on the lesson of 
on Sunday in the Star Trader course. So let's continue. What happened next? We're moving up and touching the view up. You would expect the market to bounce down, which it kind of did a little bit, a little bit. But you can see the resistance. You definitely can see the resistance because you see the market came down under the lows. Now I have an established downtrend, definitely established downtrend. So the market came down under the lows. Trend is your friend. You should expect the market to continue low. Now market's coming back up, touching the view up. You would expect some resistance. It did find resistance over here. But look at what happened here. It moved up. Can you explain why? Why would that happen? Because, you know, if you look later, you see that the market did actually continue moving lower. So would that be some kind of a trick the market played? I mean, would you expect that this would be a change of direction? Now, I wasn't trading at that time, but if I would have seen that, I would definitely tell you guys, no, I don't expect the market to change direction here. Why? It came to the view up, popped up over the view up. Why? Thank you, Edward. Thank you very much. That's the right answer. False breakout at lunchtime. Look at the time. That's lunchtime. Low volume. Any movement. Look at the volume here. Like nothing. Look at the volume at the beginning. Look at the volume at the end of the day, of course, after lunchtime. So you see, that's lunchtime. When you have such a move in lunchtime, that means nothing. Exactly like the fact that we came down the first 10 minutes, minutes meant nothing. We moved up to close the gap, meant nothing. Trend-wise. Came down under the view up, meant something. Moved up to the view up, meant something. Came down again, meant something. Moved up to the, again, resistance meant something. Moved higher at lunchtime meant nothing. So the market is now playing around a little bit. After lunchtime, 1.30, we are starting to get something. People came back, traders came back, and look at what happened. The market came down, then came up. You would expect to find resistance here because that's a view up again. They would make money buying here. They won't buy the S&P 500, right? As I mentioned earlier, they will buy some stocks. And I gave you an example uh, regarding, uh, for example, uh, Visa. Oh, that's the QQQ, sorry. I was showing you Visa earlier. So you see, Visa is down. They would make money buying it here. That's extra commission for them because they're buying under the view up. You know, when they're buying under the view up, that means automatically, the, when they're buying out under the view up, uh, as far as it is from the view up, that would automatically get to their to their to their monthly uh, um, uh, salary. So uh, again, S and P is down, moving up, resistance, view up, and then comes down again. We have an established trend. Just that in order to understand the established trend, we need to understand where the trend means nothing. First few first ten minutes. And again, on Monday, first 30 minutes, just to remember that, means nothing. Closing the gap means nothing. Coming down on the view up means something. Going up means something. Finding resistance means something. Coming down again, breaking down under the lows, of course, means something. Coming up again to the view up means something. Moving over the view up during lunchtime means nothing. Well, I can't say means nothing, but it does mean something, of course. Coming down again, that's the trend. We've seen that trend. We understood the trend. That is the trend of the market day. So you're most likely going to make money shorting stocks. Don't look for longs at that time. Okay. Coming back to the view up, you don't expect the market to break up, although you see a very big and strong move up. You would expect it to bounce the view up, which is what really happened. And the market still had four minutes, so who knows what's going to happen in the last four minutes. So again, Establishing the trend of the S&P 500 is crucial to your success. Is crucial to your success. You need to understand where the market is going. You, you cannot ignore it. 
you learn about it. You read books, you learn about it. You're always being taught, watch the market, watch market direction, watch the market trend, watch the trend, the trend is your friend. But people tend to ignore it. You cannot trend, trade without watching the S&P 500 all the time of the day. When I'm trading, I, I would, you know, look at my videos. <laughs> look at my videos. You would see me, okay, look now because it's the same camera. You would see me looking at the stock and the S&P 500 is right there. Okay, that's over here on my chart. Stock, S&P 500. Another stock I may have, S&P 500. Another stock here, S&P 500. Look at my eyes during the time when I trade. You see that on the video. I would always do this for the S&P 500. And then below I have the NASDAQ 100, which is, again, we're going to talk about, talk about it on Sunday on our Star Trader course, which is, of course, very, 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 very important too. Uh, but the S&P 500 is the most important tool. In five-minute candles, I should say that, in five, only in five-minute candles, because that's what institutional traders are using, is the most important tool. And what I did today is talk to you about, really, the basics. Trend, S&P 500, but the basics is very important. You need to know where to, uh, where to watch it, what to ignore, establish the trend, make your decision whether to go long or short, the quantity you will go long or short, everything is based on the S&P 500. That's it. Hope it was useful. And I would probably do it better without uh, drinking half a bottle of wine, which I uh, did this evening just because just before this presentation. But <laughs> excuse me for that. Now, I guess you do have a question. I'll go back. Uh, I didn't ask, uh, but when we have uptrend, the stock won't go under the view up. What is your opinion? Well, uh, just like yesterday, you see, yesterday wasn't a good example for the for how to use the view up. You see, yesterday we came under the view up and just continued. N almost nothing has to do with the view up. You know, on a day like this, yesterday, the main force is what? You know, usually I would say, I would watch the S&P 500. I would watch the institutional traders. What do the institutional traders do? I'm following the institutional traders, watching the view up. I'm watching the institutional traders. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what they do. Stocks over $10. Why? Because only institutional traders trade them. There will be 80%. Institution, institution, institution. That's my rule, right? Not yesterday. Yesterday, the market crashed. Who is selling when the market is crashing? Who's the one who's panicking? Not these institutional traders. They don't panic. They don't sell their own shares. No panic there. The ones who are panicking, the ones who are selling, is the general public. The retail customers. They are the ones who are driving the price down. And when they do that, institutional traders can only sit on the fence and do nothing. Well, they may get orders to sell too, but it's not... You cannot, the trend is established at, like yesterday, the trend is established by the general public, which is usually just 20%. But yesterday, there were much more than that. That is what they did yesterday. The market crashes not because institutional traders are selling. The market crashes because people are providing orders to their brokers, to their trade, to their funds, to their whatever. So sometimes it ends up on the institutional side, especially when selling is not 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 on the first day. Uh, after, like if the market's going to start crashing, then of course, the institutional trader will join in, they will start selling because they get orders to sell. Why? Because funds are getting orders to sell by their customers. And then it goes all the way to the institutional traders. What you've seen yesterday was panic. Panic yesterday is not being, uh, is, 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 has nothing to do with institutional traders. I mean, they may join, not usually not on the first day, but that would not be them. So a day like yesterday, you can't do anything with the view up. Why? Because the view up is a tool to compensate institutional traders. They are being compensated by the view up. They will get their salaries based on the view up. Therefore, since they were not the main players yesterday, it's helpless. Yesterday it was helpless.
So uptrend, downtrend, it's the same idea. When there's a strong day on an uptrend, it would be greed. Again, not institutional traders. They're not chasing up stocks when they're coming up. They're not selling in panic when the stocks are coming down. They don't care. It's not their money. So it has nothing to do with the view up. Edward asks, uh, what do you look for when there's a high probability of bottom or top? Well, you know, Edward, we, we just discussed that in the last few days when we were talking about in the trading room, like when you have a, a wide range candle with high volume, you know, to determine a reversal, for example, you can see here, you see that's a wide range candle. I also uploaded a lesson about this to uh, YouTube wide range candle, high volume, very good chance of reversal. That candle over here was actually the wide range candle. You see this one? Although it's green, you see the bottoming tail. The bottoming tail means it was red for a while. So that green candle you're seeing here was total red and extended volume. See that extended volume bar here was total red at that time. And when you see that, you say, oh, now I can extend. I, 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 there's there's trend is going to change now. Uh, we talked about it in the last few days. So what do I do? I'm not looking for long at that time. I'm not looking to long something. The, the established trend is down. I would definitely look for shorts, but I would short it at that time. I would wait for the market to settle down, possibly touching the view up, and then try to short it as the market comes down again. So from this point, uh, when I watch the market coming down very strong, that would be too late. I can't short anything during the last two candles. You're watching the last two candles, extended volume, markets coming down. There's nothing you can do. If you shorted here, great. Enjoy it. Take your partial, put your stop loss, uh, manage the stock that you're trading. Now the market's coming up. Don't short during this period, the last two candles, and during the period that the market's came and coming up. Just wait. Sit on the fence. Wait for the market to come down again. Touches the view up. Look for shorts. Came up enough. Good. You can look for shorts. Uh, 10 moving. Now, I, I started by reading your questions, the one that came with the question mark, the ones that came with the queue. But if there's question without a queue, I try and read them now, okay? Because uh, it's easier for me to see that you ask a question. Uh, when when are you con concentrated on the queues? Well, um, the queues are a, a helpful. Um, they are very helpful in order to, you know, I call the S&P 500 something that you will learn on the uh, Sunday Star Trader course. Um, I would call the S&P 500 my crystal ball. That's my crystal ball. It tells me what the markets, uh, when I see the markets moving up or down, I know, kind of know. I mean, I have a good idea about what the stock I'm trading would do. Uh, the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ, will give me a pre-warning about what the S&P will do. So the QQQ is in fact my crystal ball for the S&P. That helps me determine because it's more volatile, because it's more technology companies and so on. We'll talk about it on Sunday. But it's not the topic of our lesson today. We are talking about trend, understanding the trend, trending with the trend, and so on. Does direction trend of the view up matters? Yes, of course. You saw, you see, um, the trend of the view up is down. Tell you what, I'm, I'm not really, really, really watching the view up uh, trend in order to determine that because the view up tends to, you know, in order to determine the trend, you better watch uh, uh, moving averages. Um, you see something with the view up, it helps you, but it's not the main tool. A, a better tool would be uh, a moving average. So, yeah, it does show the trend, but it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, shorting uh, like a day, like I said, if you missed it out of the gate, where would you try to find an entry? Uh, would you let it go and wait? The bounce. Well, I, I I did not. I you know yesterday was. Uh, <laughs> I'm watching what happened yesterday. Uh, market came down. S&P came down three percent. Nasdaq over four percent. 
I made yesterday like four hundred dollars, which is ridiculous. <laughs> that, and I have to say, I'm I'm lucky to finish green yesterday. Uh, so I'm watching the market the way it came down yesterday, and I'm saying, well, that's one of the only days I would definitely wish I wouldn't have been trading for the first one hour or so, one one and a half hours like I usually do. Um, but I would I would definitely I'm watching yesterday now I watched it yet, of course before so you see you have some very very clear um, ideas about what the market is going to do you see uh, end of the end of the towards the end of uh, yesterday's lunchtime the market moved down but you can't trust that because that was still lunchtime one o'clock. And then it came up again, but once it came down again under the lows, that would have been like, uh, if you traded at two o'clock yesterday, that would have been like, oh my God, I got to show something. I would definitely look at that. And if I would have traded yesterday at uh, two o'clock, I would definitely look at what's happening here. And I would, wow, we've got a big day coming. <laughs> I mean, we already had a big day before that. You know, when I left yesterday, I said something that... Uh, was wrong I said well it wasn't wrong it, it was right but uh, it usually is right more than 50% of the time I mentioned yesterday that it is not likely for the market to continue more than 2% Nasdaq was down like 2% yesterday when I left and I said here in the room don't expect it generally speaking most of the time to come down more than 2% it's not likely I would usually be right like in 80% of the time. So it's okay to work according to your knowledge, according to what you expect. Don't expect it. In 80% of the time, I would be right. But yesterday was a 20%. The 20% was a breakdown under the laws. And that happened in two o'clock. And when you see something like that, if you participate, you got to be all over it. Uh, sometimes we see stock go over the view up and continue. What's happening in that case? Well, view up is a tool. When you see stock going over the view up, like for example here, that was lunchtime, means nothing. When you see stock moving up here, that was in order to close the gap. So again, it has nothing to do with the view up. Uh, but uh, sometimes when you see the stock just going up over the view up and not returning to the... Well, here we're watching the S&P 500. S&P 500 will be much more reliable than the stock because these are 500 stocks. Uh, some of them, 100 of them, may not perform like the S&P 500 and would look totally different, not coming back to the view up or anything. But if 400 of them will perform correctly with the view up, then... 500 of them would look like that. That's the S&P 500. So, first, well, we're only talking about the trend of the S&P 500 right now, not a specific stock. If you want to talk about specific stock and the behavior of the view, that's a different idea. But generally speaking, most of the time, they will return to the view up. What happens if they don't return to the view up? If you're long, you're lucky. If you're short, you're having an unpleasant day. But very likely that more than 50% of the time, they will return to the view up. That's it. Just expect them to return. You don't, it did not return, and you're short the stock. <laughs> Sorry. But that's that's exactly what trading is all about. We, we don't have 100% success rate. Uh, do institutional traders um, buy the spy? No, they usually don't. Uh, but it's just a reflection of the overall stock market. Yes, absolutely. It's a reflection of the overall. They are not uh, uh, an S&P players. No, they're not. I mean, some, some, some funds will only buy that. They don't need it. You don't, you know, an institutional trader is not required to use his specialties in buying stocks for the S&P 500. Every, excuse me for saying, every idiot can buy the S&P 500. So the S&P 500... If you buy it because of the liquidity and everything, uh, you, 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 you don't really influence uh, its behavior. You don't need the institutional traders to help you out with that. You can do it yourself. So if there's a fund that only invests in the S&P 500, they can do it themselves. They don't need to go to Goldman Sachs and ask them to buy the S&P 500 for them. It's tradable, of course. 
Now I'm going back to see if I missed any questions. If you still want to ask anything, of course, you can. Um, going back, trying to see if somebody ask a question without using the Q mark, or you can just copy it and ask me again. I don't think I missed questions. So I'm going again to your last questions. Okay, Asher asked. Um, the volume we see on the S&P 500 is the volume of the overall market or the ETF, only the ETF, only the ETF. But uh, it's a good question, Asher. Uh, the thing is, you're only seeing the ETF volume. However, it reflects the volume of the market quite correctly quite correctly so don't, don't care about the numbers you're seeing there care about you know that means there's a lot of volume in this hour and usually it's after lunchtime and a lot of volume at the beginning no volume in lunchtime and so on so it's the ETF yes it's the ETF on a personal level how long did it take for you to become more consistent to with you uh, well it, it, again it's not a topic of today but uh, I think I only became consist consistent approximately after uh, two years I stopped losing uh, probably after one and a half year but I don't think uh, you can call it consistent trading I just stopped losing and I didn't know I stopped losing after two years so you know you stop losing but you only need a confirmation for that and it takes time to get a confirmation for, well, I stopped losing. You can't say I stopped losing a month after you stopped losing. You only need to look back like six months later and say, well, I stopped losing. <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. Um, doesn't happen like a month later. <laughs> you need to look back at least six months to say, I stopped losing. Really, I don't lose anymore. Actually, I make some money. I made some money. I started making, I, I regularly started making money after 24 months. Uh, I'm not talking about a lot of money. Spy moving sideways, Joshua asked. Uh, not a good time to short, right? Right, of course. We were talking today about the trend of the S&P 500. Naturally, we need a trend. If we don't have a trend, like what usually happens, not usually, but sometimes happens, for example, on Fridays, no trend, very hard to trade. The only ones who are making money when there's no trends are the brokers. I just have been watching you and learned my time in the market. Support. It will come in time, Joshua, don't worry. I mean, you, you probably using everything I'm saying right now. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be your to provide you with some support, but you know, it will come just really naturally, absolutely naturally, don't worry about that. Yeah, you need to click the, the, the Q mark if you ask something without it. Oh, you just used it with, okay, uh, three, okay. Uh, why was this institutional traders uh, short and drive the price down? of a stock when the price is above the view up, they do, so that they will get more commission. Oh, no, um, like when the price just trends above the view up. You need to understand that three, and that's something I'm going to talk about on Sunday in the Star Trader course, is that institutional traders are not there to uh, push the market down or up. They are there to, you need to divide them into two groups, the sellers of a specific symbol the bias of a specific symbol. A person who is institutional traders, he, come, he comes to the market and he says, I am going to sell Apple today. His job is to sell Apple today. He's not going to drive it down to buy Apple at a lower price. That's not his job. His job is to sell Apple. The price is above the view up. He will sell Apple. He will make more money. Another person comes, in, maybe in another firm, could be the same firm, comes in another firm, his job is to buy Apple. This guy is looking at Apple and says, I'm not going to drive it up and then buy, drive, sorry, drive it down and buy it. So if, his, if his job is to buy Apple, he just buys Apple. Different. Yeah, 
Guys, um, I want to thank you very much for being here with me this evening. I hope this was helpful. I chose to go back to the basics today because I think some people just, for some reason, ignore the basics. I thought basics is important. I thought going back to the basics uh, sometimes is um, an important uh, tool. So I'm, I'm kind of sorry I didn't bring up something which is, you know, amazingly, here comes a great idea or something. But I think it's better for you sometimes to go back to the basics and just remember uh, how to watch the trend, the S&P 500, to understand it a little bit more. And um, because that, that's, that, that's where most of the money is. Most of the money is in the basics. In the basics. Yeah, that's the most important part. And then we move on there. Okay, guys, um, it was fun. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow in the trading room. Have a good day, good night.